everybody, and welcome to WTF Hammer Underworlds. So we're moving on to our third Season 2 Warband review video, and just as promised, we're going to be looking at Zarbag's Gits. I have their lore here, and uh, these guys basically entered Shadespire while looking for some kind of mold or something, some kind of fungal spores, and then they just got trapped in the Mirrored City during the whole Necroquake. I think that was the Necroquake. That basically just screwed everything over and turned this into some kind of a prison of never-ending death and rebirth in battle. Uh, as I always do, I'm going to be looking at this Warband's fighter cards, their faction-specific cards, and I'm going to be rating this Warband on a scale of S to D. I'm actually going to be adding something new where I'm going to be showing their relationship to all other Warbands at the end of this video. So let's just start by just taking a look at this Warband's fighter cards, and there's a lot of fighter cards to look at here. This is the largest Warband in Warhammer Underworlds, nine units. They all have the same Inspire condition generally speaking, in which once you obtain three or more glory points from whatever means, all your units get inspired, with the exception being the squigs who only inspire when Drizgit is taken out of action. Uh, let's start by taking a look at Zarbag, the leader of this warband, who is pretty solid. I mean, movement is not great. Improves to four when he gets inspired. The two dodge is always nice, but having three wounds as the highest wound characteristic does make this warband vulnerable to getting taken out of action. His attack is pretty solid though. Three swords, two damage, and then gaining cleave when inspired. And the main benefit that this warband has is their scurry reaction in which when a unit moves, every fighter who happens to be adjacent to that unit can also make a move action, of course being limited to one move per round. Next we have Drizgit the Squig Herder, who is a fairly decent melee threat. Uh, defense isn't great, three wounds isn't great, but he does have three hammers when inspired doing two damage, which is a very reliable attack. Also has the ability to move himself along with his squig companions with a specific action, which could also trigger scurry for other units. The squigs themselves, they're identical to each other, so I kind of compiled them into one frame here. So you have Bone Kraka and Gobbleuk, who basically have two hammers, two damage when uninspired, but going to three hammers and two damage with cleave when inspired. Two dodge, making them fairly evasive, but two wounds making them pretty vulnerable have a unique mechanic where they start off next to Drizgit, wherever you happen to place Drizgit when setting up the board. These guys can be pretty dangerous because they're very accurate. Snurk Sourtongue is one of the coolest units in the game. He's basically a fanatic, kind of like Blood Bowl fanatic style, where he just swings a ball in chain and it's fairly random. He has his own unique Inspire mechanic, where after an activation, you can choose to make him inspired at any point. Uh, when he's uninspired, he does a lot of damage, but the accuracy is pretty abysmal. And once he actually becomes inspired, he has a scatter method of, I'd say attacking, but it's not technically attack, where you basically roll four dice and then scatter him three hexes while following the scatter token. And anybody whose space he ends up in takes a damage and gets pushed without any real way of avoiding the damage. So Sour Tongue can be really threatening, although can be a little bit random in terms of how he moves. Uh, three dodge though, three wounds, hard to take out. If you get him in the middle of a group of enemies, he can be a pain in the ass. Next is Prog Danetta, uh, not super exceptional. Goes to two dodge, four movement when inspired, only two wounds, very accurate barb net. If you happen to land it, enemy units get a minus one to their dice characteristic until the end of their next activation, which doesn't last very long, but I mean, it's better than nothing. And then we have the three bow dudes, Sticket, Dibs, and Redcap, who are all identical, who have bows, range three is nice, but the two swords is pretty awful accuracy, only doing one damage, but getting two dodge, so it can be a little bit hard to take out of action. Most important thing to note though is that there is a lot of these guys and the majority of them can scurry. So let's take a look at the fighter cards as a whole, starting with the pros. They have a spellcaster, which is nice. I forgot to mention that Zarbag is a spellcaster. He just doesn't have a spell attack action. They have some ranged attackers. They have a good inspire mechanic. I mean, three glory points to get inspired. Pretty easy to pull off. And then the whole warband gets set off besides uh, uh, the three exceptions. They have some special abilities. They have scurry. They have the special drizgit action. And they have the special sour tongue action. So that's the most special abilities that exist in any warband as I'm developing this video. 
Uh, they have some special combat abilities. They have that barbed net and they have cleave. They have generally good defense when inspired, being two dodge or three dodge for Sour Tongue. They have decent to high accuracy, having three hammers in many cases. And they have a very large model number, which provides them with a lot of potential options during a game of Warhammer Underworlds. They do come with a few cons. They have low wounds. They do unexceptional damage. Two is the max without any kind of upgrades. And the very large model number, as I mentioned before, can be a negative in the sense that it, ha it results in a lot of low wound models being exposed to being taken out of action, generating glory points for your opponent. And they have generally low movement, that being three, until they're inspired and get four, but you know they're also able to move with scurry. So it kind of counterbalances that calm a little bit. So that covers the fighter cards. Let's take a look at this Warband's objective cards. They have all three types. We're gonna start with the Surge, Flash Finale. Score this immediately if an enemy fighter is taken out of action by a spell cast by your warband worth one glory point. I'm giving this a C because Zarbag does not even have a spell attack action. So it's kind of unlikely that an enemy fighter is going to actually be taken out of action by a spell unless you just stack unless you just stack your gambit deck full of spells, which I mean, that could be one way to play the game. Malicious Kill, score this immediately if your warband takes an enemy fighter with two or more upgrades out of action worth two glory points. I'm giving this an A because it's pretty likely to happen eventually that an enemy fighter has has two upgrades equipped on him. And if you manage to take him out, which, you know, is definitely doable, two glory as a score immediately is very nice. Obliterated, another two glory, score this immediately if a friendly snurk sour tongue is inspired and takes an enemy fighter out of action with his spinny flail move. I'm giving this an A as well because, you know, it's, it can be a bit unreliable, but it's worth two glory. Uh, really motivates you to get snurk in the middle of the enemies and can be very frustrating for the enemy to deal with. Scragged. Score this immediately if an enemy fighter is taken out of action while adjacent to three or more friendly fighters worth one glory point. I'm giving this a B. I mean, uh, it's very common that you're going to be swarming an enemy and attacking, but having three adjacent to an enemy and then landing the killing blow can be a little bit tricky. Definitely not a guaranteed glory point. So next we move on to the score in the end phase, starting with infestation. Score this in an end phase if you hold every objective worth a big five glory points. I'm giving this an A because it's pretty doable, especially considering that there's some universal cards that'll, that destroy objective tokens. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a bit circumstantial depending on if you're playing against a warband that's trying to hold objectives as well. But if your enemy is just leaving the objective tokens for you to grab, this could be easy to pull off and worth a ton of glory points. Mad Scurry, score this in an end phase of at least five of your surviving fighters made a move action in the preceding action phase worth two. I'm giving this an S because I mean, your guys are gonna be moving all the time with Scurry wouldn't be very smart to exclude this card from your deck. Petty Vindication, worth one glory point. Score this in an end phase if you score two or more other objective cards in this round. I'm giving it a B because you have to score two other ones and then have this card in your hand. Uh, there's a lot of variables that can make this not get scored. Vicious Killers, score this in an end phase if two or more friendly fighters made successful attack actions that targeted the same fighter and that fighter was taken out of action in the preceding action phase worth one glory. I'm gonna give it a B as well. So as long as you're just having numerous units attack the same guy, this can be pulled off pretty easily, but it's only worth one glory point in the end phase. So I don't know if it's worth it. Finally, we have the score in the third end phase card. This warband has two cards. Call that a win, worth two. Score this in the third end phase if there are five or more surviving friendly fighters. I'm giving this a C because your guys are pretty easy to take out. And if you're competing against an opponent that's very much committed to taking your units out of action, I think this is pretty hard to actually achieve. And Dank Haven, score this in the third end phase if there are no enemy fighters in your territory, also worth two. I'm giving this a D because denial is just better. That does it for the objective cards. So just to summarize, they promote taking enemy fighters out of action, either by attacking, by snurk, or with spells, holding objective tokens, scurrying, scoring objective cards, surrounding enemies, keeping enemies out of your territory, and surviving. Sorry for the typo there. Now we're gonna take a look at this Warband's power cards, looking at the gambits first, and then the upgrades. First gambit is Fungal Blessing. As a reaction, play this after an enemy fighter's attack action that takes an adjacent friendly fighter out of action. Their attacker suffers one damage. I'm gonna give it a B because it's nice. Guy gets taken out of action. If enemy happens to be adjacent, they suffer a damage for it. 
Leaping Wound, your leader has plus two defense in the next activation. I mean, there's a B because it's nice if you really want to lead with Zarbag and charge him in, or if you're just afraid he's going to get taken out of action. But one benefit of this warband is that each individual isn't really that valuable. So I don't know if you want to invest a card just to keep your leader alive. Little Law, plus one dice to the first attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation. That's a B, it's just a solid improve in accuracy for the next attack. Madcap Mushroom, innate, channel, and focus. For the next spell your warband attempts to cast, the fighter casting the spell suffers one damage if there are any crits in that casting roll rather than two or more crits. So I'm giving it a B as well because it definitely makes spell casting more reliable, albeit risky. Unfortunately, Zarbeck doesn't have any inherent ability to cast spells, so you'd have to couple it with more Gambit spells. And I mean, I'd probably just replace this with a Gambit spell to give him more casting variety. Make some noise. Choose up the two friendly squigs and push them each up to two hexes. I'm giving this an A. I mean, I'm tempted to give it an S, but it is only unique to the squigs, and they could already be taken out of action by the time you draw this card. But pushing them each two is very nice. Sneaky step, basically a sidestep. I'm giving it a B because it's just nice and reliable. Stab him in the knee. If the first attack action in the next activation has a range of one or two, it has plus one damage for each supporting fighter after the first. And I'm giving this a B because it could stack on a lot of damage if you commit to really swarming. But I mean, you basically have to have three guys adjacent to the same fighter in order to get plus one damage which is pretty circumstantial. A straight up plus one damage is just a bit more reliable. So that covers the ploys. Let's take a look at the spells. We have Orable Leer. Uh, it's a gambit spell requiring a focus. If it's cast, push each enemy fighter adjacent to the caster up to one hex. I'm giving this a C because you'd have to have your leader adjacent to a bunch of enemies in order to make this worthwhile. And all it does is push them. So it's kind of mediocre. We have a very hard to cast spell, Curse of the Bad Moon, two focus. If this spell is cast, choose a hex within four hexes of the caster. Any fighter in that hex or any hex adjacent suffers one damage. So it's definitely a nice spell, but it's super hard to cast, so I'm giving this a C. Jealous Hex, only costing one focus. If this spell is cast, choose a fighter that has the highest wounds characteristic on the battlefield. That fighter has minus one wounds to a minimum of one. This spell persists until that fighter is out of action. So I'm giving this an A, it's a very nice spell. It's like Abasoth's Withering, but with no range restrictions although it does force you to choose the fighter with the highest wounds. And finally, Sneaky Stab in two channel. If the spell is cast, plus one dice and cleave to the first attack action with a range of one or two made by a friendly fighter in the next activation. So fairly hard to cast, but nice benefit if you pull it off. I'm giving it a B. So that covers the gambits, which typically promote an improvement to defense. They typically increase accuracy of attacks, improving spell success chance, causing damage, pushing friendly and enemy fighters, and reducing enemy wound characteristic. So now to the upgrades, starting with Endless Whirl, which is unique to Sour Tongue. As an action, he can cause each adjacent fighter to suffer one damage, only applicable if Sour Tongue is inspired. I'm giving this a B, mostly because I prefer his normal scatter attack more than this, but I mean, this card's okay. Extra Bouncy, unique to Gobbleluck and Bonecracka. When this fighter makes a move or charge action, they can move through other fighters, but their move must end in an empty hex. So I'm giving this a C. It gives them a bit more movement mobility, but nothing too exceptional. Fiery Brand, on a critical hit, this fighter's attack actions with a range of one have plus one damage. Unique to Drizgit, so plus one damage for Drizgit. I'm giving it a C. I just give him great strength. Another card unique to Drizgit, which gives him plus one defense. I mean, this is a more legitimate C. As I mentioned earlier with regard to Zarbag, I don't, I don't think it's really worth the investment of trying to keep your fighters alive because there's so many of them and they get taken out so easily. Lurker, as a reaction after a fighter is pushed a number of hexes, if that fighter was adjacent to this fighter before the push, push this fighter up to the same number of hexes. This fighter must end the push adjacent to the other fighter, so you basically get to follow an enemy fighter as they are being pushed. I'm giving this a D because I think it's crappy. Nasty Stava. Range one, two hammers, two damage. This attack action is plus two dice if a friendly prog is supporting this fighter. So super circumstantial card. I'm giving it a C because it does do two damage and can potentially be four hammers if conditions match the card description, but most likely they won't match the card description. Ravenous, plus one damage to Gobbleluck or Bonecracker. I'm giving this a C, it brings them to three damage. It's nice, but it is unique to them. You only have two wounds. It's a risky, thing to put in your deck. Really pointy stick, two swords, cleave, two damage, range two. 
I'm giving it a C as well. It's sort of nice, but universal upgrade cards are typically better. Sniffer Spite. If this fighter is in enemy territory in the third end phase, gain a glory point unique to Zarbag. I'm giving it a B because it could give you that, because it does give you that end of game glory point potentially, which is nice, but not nice enough to warrant a higher ranking than this. Vindictive Glare. This is a nice card. Unique to Zarbag gives him a spell attack action, which he very much needs and it's based on channel, does one damage and an extra damage on a crit. I'm giving this an A because if you do want to play a more spell casty deck, this is actually a very legitimate spell attack action. And finally, Volley Caller, unique to your bow guys. As a reaction after this fighter makes the Grot Bow attack action, an adjacent friendly fighter makes their Grot Bow attack action. So it allows you to take a few shots consecutively. I'm giving it a B because it's okay, but the two swords, one damage, it's not very exceptional. So to summarize, upgrade cards promote causing or improving damage, they improve movement, increase defense, push friendly fighters, provide a spell attack action, provide glory, provide an out of turn attack, and provide some unexceptional weapon upgrades. And this is the full synopsis of this Warbands card. So as you can see, uh, objective cards are okay, I mean they have four that are pretty reliable and pretty worth including in your deck, generally speaking. Power cards though, I'd say they're pretty lacking. I mean, there's three that most likely would get included in decks. Everything else, I mean, you'd probably resort more to universal cards because there are some very nice universal cards that can apply to this Warband, especially the attack action upgrades. So they're a little bit lacking in the power card department. So time to finish off this video by rating this Warband and we're also gonna be comparing it to the other Warbands that I've already rated, adding them to that grid that I've been developing. So to summarize, this Warband has a Scurry ability, which allows them to cover a lot of ground, which is great for holding objectives, is great for surrounding enemies, and is just great for scoring objective cards as well. This Warband also has a lot of versatility with regard to its actions. It has many options because there's so many units and they have good movement ability. They can attack with decent accuracy, with medium damage, and Snurk's ability. They can also move easily and cast spells, so very, very versatile. Unfortunately, they do have many low wound units, which cause them to give away glory points to warbands that take advantage of this situation. But they can often score a lot of glory regardless of some of their units being killed. And finally, they don't have exceptional power cards, meaning that they rely on universal cards, as I mentioned. So their effectiveness at any given point is very dependent on the meta, more so than many of the other warbands. So with this in mind, I'm actually gonna be rating this warband as an A because they, they definitely are solid and they definitely are versatile and depending on the meta, they can be very powerful like in the current meta of October 2020 when I'm making this video, they're actually very strong but a little bit inconsistent mostly because of the weak power cards. So if we look at this big picture grid, which is the first time I'm showing this image, we can sort of see where Zarbag fits. So I'm placing it as an A ranking, although I do believe that Storm Sire's Curse Breakers are superior but not by a ton. So I'm putting Storm Sires and Zarbags as an A ranking, but giving a bit of edge to Storm Sires, at least for now. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please comment below. Please like and subscribe if you like this content. I'm going to be posting a link to the balancing video that I'll be making for Zarbags Gits, which I'll be posting tomorrow. So you guys can check that out as well. And I plan to continue these videos until I uh, basically cover all the warbands. We could rank them all, place them all, make balancing suggestions for all of them, and hopefully motivate Games Workshop to implement the balancing recommendations to make this game more diverse and more fun. So thanks again for watching this video, and I hope you all have a nice day.